Thus far, we've been speaking about property as acquisition from below. Uh, but it turns out historically, often property is acquired by conquest. And at that particular point, individual owners obtain their title, not by first possession, but by obtaining it from the conquering ruler. Uh, the decisive act in English law was the conquering of England in 1066 by William the Conqueror. And what he then did was to create a system in which he rewarded his chief officials by giving them property. And essentially they were now property and service relationships held of the crown. And this in effect is a top-down system in which what happens is that the rights of each of the tenants in the hierarchy are determined by the contracts that he or she have with the parties above them and the contracts that they enter into the property down below. The same thing happens today in connection with leases. Somebody owns a piece of property, and what they do is they now lease some fraction of it to a person. That person now has two choices. They can lease or sublease some fraction of it to a third person and then continue it on down, or could they can assign their interest to somebody else. And so when you start to think about these things, what you do is you have chains of title, and what you must be able to do is to figure out the relationships between any two parties who are in direct contact with each other, so-called privity, and those which are further removed. So as to give a very simple example of how this works, if it turns out that the head tenant is in breach of his obligations to the landlord and is evicted, the subtenant necessarily disappears from view as well because his rights cannot arise above those of the landlord. When you're dealing with modern landlord-tenant relationships, uh, landlord relationships are essentially of several types. Some cases, the leases are very simple, and the only thing that the tenant gets is bare possession of the property, and the landlord has no particular service obligations. But modern leases typically are service arrangements in which the landlord undertakes a lot of obligations to supply heat, doormen, and so forth to the tenant. And here, the two interests are no longer independent, but are dependent upon one another. And it is almost universally understood that if the landlord does not supply his particular obligation, the tenant is going to be relieved of his. But once people go off the rails, such that there's a breach, there is often a huge lack of clarity as to what the appropriate remedy is. Is it abandonment? Is it damages? Is it a requirements for specific performance? And the hardest thing for law students to understand is that even if the rights and duties are crystalline, it turns out the remedial choices are deeply complex. And whether you're talking about the medieval feudal system or the modern lease system, the contractual devices that were used were designed to secure possession and security for everybody inside this elaborate framework. Thank you.